So we've come to our last speaker of the evening, uh, Boaz Rus. I've already introduced him, so I'll do this briefly. Boaz is a scholar of Kabbalah and its reception over the centuries, as well as the usage of concept of mysticism among scholars, and also a scholar of various esoteric movements, including, among others, theosophy. And he'll be speaking about new religious movements in Israel, global aspects, and local characteristics. Boaz. Um, okay, good evening. Um, Israel today, although to a large extent a secular society, is a thriving center of religious and spiritual activities. Alongside established traditional Jewish, Muslim, and Christian groups, there is a variety of new religious and spiritual movements. These include new Jewish movements and trends, mostly neo-Hasidic, a neo-Kabbalistic group, as well as many important new religious movements such as Scientology, ISKCON, Imen, Falun Dafa, and many others, and I believe that some of you have already uh, encountered some of them in the last two days. Israel is also a center of new age mov movements and practices, including yoga, channeling, meditation techniques, and complementary medicine. In my short talk today, I'll try to keep it short, I would like to give a short introduction to new religious movements in Israel, concentrating on new religious movements that are active in the Jewish majority population. I will discuss some of the global features of Israeli new religious movements, as well as some of the particular Israeli culture-specific features of these movements. Before turning to examine new religious movements in Israel, I would like to offer a brief introduction to religion in Israel and discuss some developments in modern Judaism that will help understand the context of the emergence and of the particularities of new religious movements in Israel. As I just said, I will concentrate in my talk today on new religious movements amongst the majority Jewish population in Israel. There are also interesting religious developments in the non-Jewish population, which is mostly Muslim, as well as small Christian and Druze minorities. Nonetheless, most new religious movements are active within the Jewish population, and I will concentrate on such movements. The majority of Jewish Israelis, about 80%, define themselves as secular or traditional. About 10% as religious and 10% as ultra-Orthodox, in Hebrew, Haredi. It should be emphasized that this division pertains mostly to matters of Jewish religious practice rather than to Jewish to religious belief. Thus, for instance, almost 70% of those defining themselves as secular say that they believe in God. About 40% of, the, of Jewish Israelis define themselves as secular. This means that they do not follow Jewish religious law, do not observe Sabbath, the Jewish dietary laws, or visit regularly the synagogue. Nonetheless, some Jewish practices are observed by the majority of secular Israelis, such as circumcision, celebration of Jewish holidays, Jewish religious marriages, and Jewish burial and mourning practices. A large number of Israelis prefer not to define themselves as either secular or religious, and define themselves as traditional or religious tradi traditional. Those who define themselves as such are not strictly committed to Orthodox Jewish practice, yet they have a stronger attachment to Jewish tradition than those who define themselves as secular and follow some religious practice, especially observing, observing, observing dietary laws, visiting synagogue on a more regular basis, etc. About 10% define themselves as religious. In Israeli terms, that means people who observe Jewish Orthodox practice. Most of those defining themselves as religious 
but not as ultra-Orthodox, follow a religious national ideology, adopt modern Western values and ways of life, and are well integrated in Israeli society and culture. Finally, about 10% of the Jewish population define themselves as ultra-Orthodox, in Hebrew, Haredim, that means those who fear God's commandments. Ultra-Orthodox are strict observers of Jewish Orthodox practice. They reject many modern Western values and practices and distinguish themselves by different dress code and behavior. They are less integrated into modern Israeli society and culture. Many of them reject Jewish national ideology and do not serve in the army. There are, ma there are many divisions and subgroups groups, groups, sorry, among Haredim. One important large sector among the ultra-Orthodox are the Hasidim. The Hasidic movement, which originated in 18th century East Europe, emphasized ecstatic and enthusiastic religious practices. The Hasidim are divided into different groups who adhere to different dynasties of charismatic rabbis. Before moving on to discuss the recent history of religion in Israel, I would like to mention another important division within Israeli Jewish society. The division between Jews of Sephardi or Oriental origins and Jews of Ashkenazi, European descent. This division was created after the expulsion of Jews from Spain at the end of the 15th century. Sephardi Jewish religious conduct became, that is, of those who came from Spain, became prevalent in the areas in which the Jewish Spanish immigrants arrived and their culture became dominant, mostly in North Africa and in the Middle East. Ashkenazi, which comes from the Hebrew word for Germany, is the term used for Jews who arrived from the West and mostly from East Europe, where medieval Jewish German religious norms were dominant. I would like to turn now to a brief history of religious cultural development in Israel, which may help understand the context of the activities of new religious movements in Israel. Until the 1970s, the political, social, and cultural hegemony in Israel, which was founded in 1948, was Ashkenazi, socialist, and secular. During the 1970s, the secular socialist hegemony was weakened and significant political, social, and cultural religious changes occurred. These changes are related to the global economic and political changes of the 1970s, to the trauma of the 1973 Yom Kippur War, and to the loss of political power of the left Labor Party to the right-wing Likud Party. During the 1970s and the early 1980s, the national religious sector and the traditional and ultra-Orthodox Oriental Sephardi sectors who were marginalized in early Israeli society and culture became stronger and more influential. At the same time, the return to religion movements who started in the late 1960s became more significant. Young Israelis of secular background, including several prominent Israeli artists and pop culture celebrities, became interested in Judaism, started following Jewish Orthodox practice, and joined diverse ultra-Orthodox groups. At the same time, a variety of new religious movements became active and publicly visible in Israel. Some of these were, de some of these were new develop developments of older Jewish trends, mostly Kabbalistic and Hasidic. Others were non-Jewish global movements which were imported to Israel. As the number of Israeli new religious movements is very large, I will just mention a few of them, starting with some of the non-Jewish important movements, and finally we'll reach new religious movements in Israel. Since the early 1970s, and I said, not much later after their appearance in the United States and Europe, 
some new religious movements were imported to Israel. A few older Western esoteric movements, such as anthroposophy and theosophy, as Adam said, this is one of my interests, uh, were active in Israel before the 1970s, but they had very little public impact. One of the first new religious movements to arrive in Israel was Scientology. Groups interested in Scientology were established in the early 1970s, and the first Israeli center was founded in Tel Aviv in 1976, and I believe that some of you visited today the current center of the Scientology, Scientology in Israel. Transcendental meditation became very popular in Israel in the 1970s. Later, a community settlement, settlement and a kibbutz of TM practitioners were established in the north of Israel. ISKON, Harish Krishna, is also active in Israel since the 1970s, and today there are several small Hare Krishna centers in different locations in Israel. Another group that reached Israel in the 1970s is the Imen group. The Imen, and that's the way they pronounce it, uh, which, uh, which is today is called also the Template Network, was founded in England in the early 1970s by Raymond Amin, known as Leo. It reached Israel several years after its foundation, and Israel became one of its largest centers. In 1986, the Israeli Imen group established in the Galilee a community settlement, Ma'aletz Via, which we will visit in our post-conference uh, field trip. As I mentioned before, small groups interested in anthroposophy, mostly German-speaking immigrants, were active in Israel before 1970s. In the 1970s, anthroposophy was discovered by young Israelis mostly kibbutz members, and, <clears throat> and since then, anthroposophy, and especially its education system, became very successful in Israel. Today, there are 22 Waldorf schools in Israel and about 200 Waldorf kindergartens. A successful anthroposophical kibbutz, Harduf, was founded in 1982. Since the 1970s, Many other groups arrived to Israel, such as the New Acropolis, Falun Dafa, the World Brotherhood Union, and many, many others. There is also some activity of Christian new religious movements, such as the Jehovah Witnesses, as well as Jewish Messianic groups. That is, Jews who adopt Christian beliefs but preserve a Jewish identity, identity and practice. <clears throat> Most of the non-Jewish new religious movements I mentioned and many others were imported to Israel from Europe and the United States. There are also some new religious movements without strong connection to Judaism which orig originated in Israel. One of them is the small group of followers of Yosef Safra, a former actor who became a spiritual leader. And in 1989, Safra followers established a kibbutz near a light called Neotz Madar. Another small and interesting movement is the Light Center, followers of a religious leader called Aviv Hagoel which accidentally in Hebrew means Aviv Goel, Aviv the Redeemer, but that was the name he was born with. It's a, quite a popular name. The, brook, the group became active in the mid-2000s, and it aspires to establish the city of God in the Negev Desert. A few years ago, the group tried to establish the settlement, but were evacu evacuated, and these are pictures from the settlement that they tried to establish. Before turning to Jewish new religious movements, I would like to mention also the introduction and development of New Age culture in Israel. Since the 1990s, there is a wide proliferation of New Age activities in Israel, which include alternative medicine, various forms of meditation techniques, yoga, human potential workshops, channeling, the expertise of Adam, etc. I would like to turn now to the Jewish new religious movements, which probably are less familiar to you. Most of the Jewish new religious movements have their origins in earlier, 
mostly Kabbalistic and Hasidic movements. And hence, they are not always perceived as new religious movements. Some of these movements began their activities earlier than the important new religious movements, but most of them also became active and publicly visible in the 1970s. One of the earliest and best known new religious movements, Jewish new religious movements, is the Chabad, or Lubavitcher Hasidim. Chabad was founded in the late 18th century in Russia. During the Second World War, its headquarters moved to the United States. After the war, under the leadership of Rabbi Menachel Mendel Schneerson, Chabad underwent significant changes and became the most active and inno innovative contemporary Hasidic movement. Chabad is characterized by intensive outreach activities to Jews, an efficient use of modern media technology, and a strong messianic ideology. The leader of the movement, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, who passed away or hid himself in 1994, was regarded as the Messiah by many of his followers. Today, he is declared as the Messiah, and his death is denied by, major, by the majority of the Chabad followers. Other new Hasidic movement branched out from Breslov Hasidim. Breslov was a small, radical, and non-conformist Hasidic movement that was also founded in the late 18th century in East Europe by Rabbi Nachman of Breslov. Since the early 1970s, there is a revival of Breslov Hasidism, an emergence of new Breslov movements in the United States and especially in Israel. Most members and many leaders of the neo-Breslov groups are returnees to religion, most of them from secular background. One of the most visible of the many Breslov groups are the followers of Rabbi Israel Odessa, which you see in the picture, and Gordon uh, encountered his picture already today. They are called the Nachnachim because of their belief in the sacred formula based off the name of Rabbi Nachman, Na, Na, Nach, Nachman, Meuman. Uman is the place where Rabbi Nachman died. A different type of a new Jewish religious movement, which became a global movement, is the Kabbalah Center, which was founded by Philip Berg. The movement, which is based on the Kabbalistic teaching of the early 20th century communist Kabbalist, Rabbi Yehuda Ashlag, became active in Israel and the United States in the 1970s. Today, it is probably the largest, best known of the Jewish Kabbalistic movements, whose most famous student is Madonna, who believes that Kabbalists do it better. Another movement based on the teaching of Yehuda Ashlag is the Bnei Baruch movement which was established, established in the early 1990s by Michael Leitman, an immigrant from the so former Soviet Union. The center of the movement is in Israel, and it is growing rapidly and spreading internationally. There are many other smaller new relig Jewish religious movements. I will mention just one of them, a very controversial group, Lev Tahor, which I think was already mentioned today. This is a very small, ultra-Orthodox group headed by the Israeli-born returnee to religion, Shlomo Erez Halbernatz. In the 1990s, the group moved to New York and later to Canada, and recently it relocated in Guatemala. As you can see, this is the picture from Canada and that from uh, uh, Guatemala. The group is characterized by extreme and strict religious ob observance. It was involved in several court cases, and Halbernatz himself was convicted of kidnapping a young boy and spent two years in prison in the United States. I would like to turn now and examine some of the global and mostly local aspects and characteristics of new religious movements in Israel. In many aspects, new religious movements in Israel are similar to, to new religious movements elsewhere in the world, especially in Europe and the United States, where many of them arrived from. 
Many of the Israeli non-Jewish movements are part of global movements, and some of the Jewish movements, such as Chabad, the Kabbalah Center, Ebnei Baruch, became international movements. Global aspects of, new religious of the Israeli new religious movements are found in their institutional structures and their economic activities. Many of the movements operate in similar ways to international business cooperation. They adopt global late capitalistic business models and advertising strategies for marketing their ideas and practices and for recruiting followers. Globalization is expressed also in the ideolo ideology of most new religious movements in Israel. Many of them declare that they are open to everyone without ethnic, religious, or gender distinctions. Many of them incorporate themes, beliefs, and practices from different religious and cultures. This happens not only in the non-Jewish important movement, but also in Jewish new religious movements. But there are also many local characteristics to new religious movements in Israel, which are the result of the adaptation of the movements to Israeli culture and their aspiration to achieve public legitimacy and influence while maintaining their specific beliefs and practices. First and foremost, there is an obvious dominance of Jewish new religious movements in Israel. Many of the movements originated from older Jewish movements or adopted Jewish practices and doctrines. Adoption and integration of Jewish elements appears also in some of the important non-Jewish movements, and many of them declare that they are compatible with Judaism. Thus, for instance, we can find in the website of one of the Hare Krishna groups in Israel an explanation based on the words of Krishna to the words of one of the songs of the Jewish Passover Seder. Another interesting adaptation, Jewish adaptation, is the foundation of anthroposophical Jewish Orthodox kindergartens. And the Hebrew speakers may appreciate the pun I saw, I heard some appreciation. Uh, anthropo dos. Dos is a word, slightly pejorative word for, although it's used also by the, of, of, of meaning religious Jewish Orthodox term. So you have the anthropo dos, anthropo dos. As I already mentioned, in different from other places, there is a relatively sn a, a small number of Christian new religious movements in Israel, although I think we see more of them uh, uh, in recent years. Furthermore, Christian elements are downplaying in movements such as anthroposophy and Scientology in Israel, as I'm sure those of you who visited there today notice, they avoid using the term Church of Scientology. Apart from the connections to Judaism, there's so also some other cultural specific elements of Israeli new religious movements, movements which are connected to the political and social realities of Israel and to the aspiration of the movements to gain leg legitimacy and influence within Israeli society. As probably many of you have noticed, the military plays a central role in Israel. Many of the Israeli new religious movements adopt the positive attitude to the army in the Israeli national ethos. They emphasize the military, military background of the members and leaders, the high ranks and distinctions they achieved in the army, and their participation in distinguished units such as the Air Force or commando units. An interesting example of the integration of Israeli military ethos in the activities of new religious movements is the attempt of the Israeli Imen movement to open a preparatory pre-military program intercommunal settlement, Ma'ale Tzviya. Such programs, pre-military programs, are very popular in Israel, and they are uh, um, they're, they're, they're intended to prepare the young Israelis for, uh, 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 for the military 
uh, uh, service. They don't contain, they're not, uh, uh, they don't uh, involve military training, but much more studying, learning about society, Judaism, etc. Although at first the Minister of Defense gave, it a, it gave his approval to the program, the program was closed because of the allegations that the Yemen is a cult. And the newspaper report from 2003, I brought it in Hebrew, I'll translate it to you, says something like, they can command a commando unit, but they are not allowed to train you for military service. A nonprofit organization that includes veteran combat officers wanted to establish a pre-military preparatory academy in the communal settlement Maletz via in the Galilee, whose members followed the ideas of the Yemen. Initially, the ministers of education and defense were enthusiastic and granted the permission. But then ultra-Orthodox elements intervened and the permission was canceled. The adoption of the Israeli military ethos appears also in Jewish ultra-Orthodox movements, notwithstanding the ambivalent attitude to the army amongst ultra-Orthodox communities. Thus, for instance, the Chabad movement use in their activities many military images and themes, such as calling the youth movement the army of God, and using what they call the mitzvah tank. The Lubavitcher, uh, uh, the Lubavitcher rabbi, uh, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. almost every Jewish new religious movement I'm familiar with, I think the only exception is left the whole, emphasizes that its leaders or prominent followers were former officers, pilots, or commando fighters. Israel new religious movements also adopt the high value given to settling the land in Israeli national ethos. Several Israeli new religious movements establish their own community settlements or kibbutzim, mostly in peripheral, peripheral areas with government support. And I, I think I have already mentioned almost all of them, the Imen, Imen village Malet Sviya, founded in 1986, the Anthroposophical Kibbutz, Arduf, founded in 1982, the community settlement and kibbutz of the Transcendental Meditation, Hararit and Yachad, and the kibbutz of Yosef Safra followers, Neotz Madar, from, founded in 90, 1989. There is also an interesting Kabbalistic, ultra-Orthodox communal settlement, or Haganuz, whose members make a living from a winery, ultra-Orthodox tourism, and a college for alternative medicine. Another feature of the Israeli new religious movements is the involvement of several new religious movements in Israeli politics. Although many new religious movements declare their detachment from politics, some Israeli movements express political ideas and take part in Israel politics. For instance, the Lubavitcher Rebbe expressed strong political opinions and Chabad movement was, mo was involved in Israeli election campaigns. And if you don't I, uh, identify the people, of course, this is the, the Lubavitcher Rebbe uh, shaking hands with the young Bibi Netanyahu and uh, shaking head, uh, hands with uh, uh, Ariel Sharon, the former prime minister. Um, Similarly, some of the neo broslev movements express right-wing political ideas, left the whole, on the other hand, always an exception, adopts an anti-Zionist ideology. In recent years, the Bnei Baruch Kabbalistic, neo-Kabbalistic movement became very much involved in Israeli politics. Michael Leitman, the leader of Bnei Baruch, comments regularly on political matters, and members of Neighboruch joined as a group, the ruling Likud party. In the last World Congress of Neighboruch, three Israeli cabinet members participated. In the picture, you can see Rabbi Lightman holding hands with the transport, sports and culture, and public security ministers. Before concluding, and I promise I will soon conclude, 
I would like to say a few words about the reception of the movements in Israel. Since the 1980s, there is a small but influential anti-cult movement, and some new religious movements, which are identified as cults, receive very negative attention in the media. Since 1982, there were four government reports on cults, the last one in 2011. There's a very interesting study of these reports and the changes in Israeli society that they reflect that was published by Adam Klein Oron and Mariana Ruach Midbar. Recommended reading. Although until now, very few measures were taken against the movements in Israel, in recent years, some parliament members are drafting an anti-cult law. And as Adam mentioned, actually, uh, uh, this was the reason for the foundation of, uh, 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 of the Meida Center. So possibly this is the reason that you are here in a, in, in, in a, con in a Cessna conference. Not all new religious movements active in Israel are identified in the public opinion as cults. Initially, it was especially important non-Jewish groups that were perceived and targeted as such. Today, there are also quite a few Jewish groups that are per perceived as cults, especially small groups in which criminal activities and sexual har harassments were committed. Not, notwithstanding the negative attitude to cults in Israel society, some of them, some new religious movements became quite successful and in, in, influential. I mentioned anthroposophy is very successful in Israel, and groups such as Chabad and Bnei Baruch gained significant political power. All of the new religious movements, settle, community settlements that I have mentioned, received support from the government. So now I will conclude. Since the 1970s, Israel became a thriving center of new religious and spiritual movements. In many ways, the Israeli movements are simil similar to new religious movements in other places in the world, and many of the groups are local branches of global movements. Yet, there are also several unique features that characterize Israeli new religious movements, which, which are the result of the aspiration of the movements to integrate and succeed within Israeli society. The adaptation integration of new religious movements in Israel society created interesting, complex, and sometimes contradictory new religious formations. Thus, we can find an, in Israel a Jewish Orthodox education system inspired by anthroposophy. A new Kabbalistic movement, which is attacked by anti-cult activists as a dangerous cult, I mean the Bnei Baruch, but is supported by minister, ministers from the ruling Likud party. And a small esoteric religious movement founded in England that attempts to establish a pre-military preparatory program in a community settlement which was founded with the support of the Israeli government. Thank you. <laughs>